Good day, everyone. It is a great privilege for me to share the Word of God, and I am so much happy and I feel so much excited about the message that God prepared for us. But before we start, I would like to share a beautiful love story of a young man who falls in love with a very beautiful lady. To begin, let us call him in the name of Ben. Ben is a working student who is very eager to finish his studies. He worked as a student guard in AUP. One morning, he saw a beautiful lady passing by the PSD. She was very beautiful with her chinita eyes and her smile. When you saw it, uh, truly, you will fall in love with her. Ben was so eager to know about the young lady she met. And so he began searching for information about her, where she is staying, what dorm she is in, um, what is her course, her hobbies, her likes, where did she came from, and so on. And as Ben get to know her, he began to fall in love with her deeper and deeper. And so he decided to court her, not because of her looks, but because of who she is. After a year of courting, Ben had to transfer to another school. But he didn't stop courting her. Even though he is far away from her, he always think of her, about her likes, her hobbies, what would she likes about Ben. Then, after they finish studying, finally Ben got a beautiful yes from this young lady he is courting. Their love grows by serving the Lord and serving other people. And God blessed them with two children. And one of their child is telling their love story in front of you right now. Yes, my friends, this love story is the story of my parents. That is the story about how they grow in love and maintained their life committed to each other. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, it is a great privilege to tell the message, your message to um, other people. I pray, Lord, that may your Holy Spirit guide me and may your Holy Spirit fill our hearts and our mind as we listen to your word lord i know that i am not good at this but i know that the holy spirit will work in me and that you will work in me to sh for to enable me to speak your word and lord thank you for hearing and answering our prayer in christ's name amen the title of the message for us today is my life for christ and it is focused in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. It is a story, it is Paul's secret of sustaining a sanctified life. So let me read Colossians 3, 1 to 5. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life now is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear in Him in glory. Put your death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immortality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. There are three secrets of how to sustain a sanctified life that we could found in this passage. And we are going to drive through it one by one. The first secret is my heart. 
for Christ. It means that it is no longer your heart that controls over you, but the things that leads you to Christ. As stated in verse 1 of Colossians chapter 3. You know what? The moment my father caught my mother, he did not let his heart to be in control of him. We all know that heart is deceiving. As stated in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And so, he surrendered his heart to God. And he let the things that would make him be get to know more about my mom be in control. To tell as my mom told me, I did not like your dad at first. Lagi siyang busted sa akin. But he never stopped. What make my mom like my dad is his patience in waiting and his eagerness on how to make him be closer to her. How about with Christ? Are we patiently waiting for his answer? Or we want things to be ours immediately? Are we eager to be closer more to Christ despite of the challenges we may face? Are we eager to surrender our life to Him, our heart to Him, and let the things that lead us closer to Him be in control? I hope that we are eager to know Him more and more and be closer to Him more and more. Despite of the challenges that we face, despite of the trials we face, despite of the fact that we know what lies ahead, despite of the problems we encounter each day, I hope that we would surrender our heart to Him and let the things that leads us closer to Him be in control. The second secret of how to sustain a sanctified life is my mind for Christ. It means that it is no longer your mind that rules over you, but the things that leads you to Christ. This is stated in verse 3 of Colossians chapter 3. You know, when my dad transferred to another school, he didn't stop courting my mom. And what makes him feel that he is closer to my mom is when he thinks of my mom. That it, and as the years goes by, he never think of quitting in courting my mom. He always send letters informing about his life, sending gifts during her birthday, and sometimes he even visit her in AUP. Though there are many beautiful ladies around him, his eyes is fixed only for my mom. He is very loyal, thinking only what pleases to my mom. And though they are afar from each other, he always thinks of her. And that makes him feel that he is just right beside her. My mom, he is just close to her. In Christ, do you always think that the things that will make us feel that he is closer to us, or we are thinking, we are clinging so much on the things around us, on the things of this world that we neglect to think of him? As stated in Romans 12 verse 2, do not be conformed of, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, and perfect will. 
I hope that we would renew our mind thinking only, only the things that is good and pleasing in the eyes of God. I hope that we will not be blinded on the things around us. My friends, let us fix our mind in Him and be ready for His soon return. The last secret of sustaining a sanctified life is my life for Christ. It is no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you. This is a beautiful and fulfilling thing we must do. Let us live our life in Jesus. In this world full of uncertainties, let us focus our life to Jesus by surrendering ourselves to Him. And accept the fact that we are all sinners. We are so in love with this world. We always think of the world. We always admire things in this world. But this world will give us trouble. This world will give us suffering. This world will give us sadness, death, pain. But God will never give us that. In fact, He will give us love. He will give us peace. He will give us comfort despite of the challenges we face each day. He loves us so much that He is so eager to fulfill His promise, the life of eternity. He even gave His Son to die on the cross for us to be saved. Now the question is, are we going to cling in this world or cling more to God? God is inviting us to experience life of eternity where there will be no more suffering, no more death, no more sadness. He doesn't want us to suffer any longer. So friends, let us prepare ourselves, live a sanctified life, and set our heart on things above. Let us set our mind on things above and leave this worldly treasure here on earth. Time is near. Let us cling to Christ.